There. Okay. <laughs> Hi, YouTubers. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Uh, another great episode about books. Yes. So we can't get enough of them. All right, we're going to start. All right, welcome back, guys, to episode 35. Yeah, today it's teen books for you, and these are some of their favorites of our teenagers. Yes, I feel like the last episode we did um, actually cost me a lot of money because I bought a bunch of the books <laughs> Karen I recommended. I bought some too. <laughs> um, we both end up doing that to each other. It's kind but of I feel like that's the biggest age range people have recommendations mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really glad we're doing these other age ranges. Did I say that right? Yeah. Because the little young kids, I don't feel like there's a good selection. Mm -hmm. And in teens, I don't feel like there's a great selection. Yeah. Sometimes it keeps it too simple or goes too adult. Yes. Definitely. So get ready to get your world rocked. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay, so I will start. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so this is a beautiful book, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I think it might be a required high school one. Yeah, I read it in high school. I was just saying to her, we were talking about it, that I don't think I've read it since high school and I really want to reread it because I know I loved it so much and it's so many people's favorite. Yeah, and I've been pretty open. I didn't really read in high school. So I didn't read this book till this year mm -hmm. because my kids had read it. Like, it's a classic, it's beautiful, right? Yeah. So I kept giving it to my children and I thought, why am I not reading this book? So I read it this year and it's beautiful, one of my favorites, and my children also loved it. Um, it's set in the deep south, a lot of prejudice against blacks and whites, mm -hmm. and a black man is accused of a terrible crime. Right. And nobody will defend him except one man, one white lawyer, right? Mm -hmm. And kind of this story of prejudice, and, um, but also a w beauty, um, just such, such a good book. Mm -hmm. It is such I, a beautiful one. I love and that And it's one. such a good um, message for kids to learn and understand, I think, as well. I love, yeah. I love those hard topics, especially in the teenage years, so that they can really um, you know, understand these, these deeper issues that are going on. Yes, I... Uh, it's just, it's a great topic to be able to talk about. And any book about World War II or any book, you know, about mm -hmm. where there's prejudices, mm -hmm. why it's terrible to not like somebody from the color of their skin, their religion, right. of just loving people. And this is the ugly side, what happens when you don't right. love people and include them in your lives. And, and so I love having a book like that that sees the tender side mm -hmm. and even some of the so. scary parts of being the person to stand up for what's right. Yeah, yeah, but I love that you can teach them those kinds of lessons through these books as well of, you know, standing up for yourself or for others that are underdogs. Yeah, so I've had my kids read this um, when I feel like they're ready, but probably around 12 and up. That's good. So, and kind of going along with the same theme, my first is The Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom. Love, love, love Another this one. just stunning, amazing classic book that everyone should read. And I love her whole attitude in this book. Like she is just an amazing person. And it's if you haven't read it, it's during World War II and she's in a concentration camp, her and her sister. Uh -huh. And they she just is always finding the good and the things to be happy about despite yeah. being in these horrific Well, it's more her sister in the beginning. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And her sister is kind of a light. Mm -hmm. And the, she has to decide what does she want to do. Right. Yeah. It's a beautiful story, and I remember crying through that one. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. But also just thinking about myself and my own attitude about the hardships that come at me and how do I handle them while I'm not in a concentration camp. Right. I have little trials that come at me all the time, and what am I doing with them? And what good am I finding through them? Yeah. So no, that one's an awesome one. Mm -hmm. And I've read one that was kind of an abridged version and Corey Ten Boom's actual book, The Hiding Place, mm -hmm. and highly recommend The Hiding Place over oh, yeah. any That's abridged version. Um, my daughter, she had read both too, and she was like, why did I read the other one? This one's a hundred times better. So, yeah, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, this next one, you probably have seen the movies, maybe. Um, but th as usual, the book is always better. <laughs> so, The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings series. Yeah. Um, this was a fun one that my husband's read to us. And one that my, some of my big kids have read. I know I read Hobbit on my own, but kind of this one's been more of a family book. And The Hobbit starts with Bilbo Baggins and kind of his adventure of how he gets the ring, mm -hmm. um, what happens 
oh, you know, all these things of Gollum. Have you really not heard of Lord of the Rings? I don't know. <laughs> like, I think everybody's <laughs> probably heard of it by this point. Um, the book is always better. The books are always better. I have not read the Lord of the Rings. I have read The Hobbit. Okay. But I have not read the Lord of the Rings. I did start it and didn't finish, <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, I like the story. The story is fun, but I, I get stuck in the flowery poem language sometimes oh, okay. and have a hard time sifting through it. But my son has read them multiple times, and he loves these books and the movies a lot. Yeah. So that's what my daughter's reading them on her own right now. Mm -hmm. My big boys have read them on their own. Um, I've just read The Hobbit on my own, and then my husband's read these aloud to us. That's so fun. it's fun and it doesn't completely match up with the movie mm -hmm. like the book one ends in a different spot than the movie ends and and so yeah it's kind of a fun comparison too yeah, great definitely. books all right i'm gonna throw out a c.s lewis book who's um, that who's <laughs> that okay we already have talked about narnia but i love a lot of c.s lewis's books that are for older people not not such the young ones as the narnia but um the screw tape letters and mere christianity are both fabulous ones and others have, as well I've read of his yeah. but those two I think are good for teenage years to read um my son has read both of those I just recently reread the screw tape letters and it was fun it's for me to read interesting it book. is a really interesting book and if you haven't read it it's it's basically like a devil teaching his apprentice apprentice little nephew devil mm -hmm. how to be a better Devil. Right, how to right. trick people, deceive yeah. them. So them it's letters them. that he writes to his nephew um, of how to get them away from Christianity, basically, because yeah. he's trying to target this one specific person who just joins the Christian faith, and he's trying to help him pull him out or not let it stick with mm -hmm. him. And it's, it's a fascinating read, and what I really like a lot about it is just how... Um, kind of makes you think about the tactics that Satan yeah. is using on you and, and what's working and what's not. And so it just makes you think a lot about um, the things that might be happening in your mind and around you. So, yeah, those little family. negative thoughts mm -hmm. that just creep in. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I actually, I think my favorite is The Great Divorce. Oh yes, I love that one books. as well. Uh, and my, this is funny, we were talking about this last night, my husband was, and he was like, better than Screw Tape Letters? And I was like, Screw Tape Letters has like a really good but kind of a dark vibe mm -hmm. to it. It is darker. And Great Divorce to me is so hopeful. Yeah, I loved that one too. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, so they're all, they're all great books. They are. I'm He's, in the middle of mere Christianity right now. He is a, just a phenomenal author and I love the messages he brings into all of his books. Absolutely. Okay, this next book my husband loved. Karen has read it before. I love before. this book too. Um, but my husband had asked me to read it forever and I finally, my quit being so stubborn and said, fine, I'll read the stinking book. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it's called How Green Was My Valley, and it was by Richard, and I'm going to say the last late name wrong because it's Welsh. Do you want to say that? Llewellyn? Oh, it's Llewellyn. It yes. is? Okay. You know, like in Lego, it's not Lego. I speak Lloyd. Welsh. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't. But I am Welsh, and so I know a few <laughs> pronunciations, okay. maybe. If I so, know. yes, this is taking the setting is in Wales, and do you say his name Hugh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I always so. said Hugh. I think it's Hugh. So this is the great thing about reading it. The names to me were a little bit hard to pronounce because they're Welsh mm -hmm. names and so they are difficult. In your mind, you can just pronounce it however you want, but I'll say Hugh. Um, it's his story of growing up in Wales, and it is beautiful. It I is. think my favorite part of the book is kind of this Welsh community of love and open doors mm -hmm. and come in sit down mm -hmm. let me get my best china out it for is you a beautiful culture and i have a deep love for this book because i got to go to wales it's been about a decade or more now yeah but my dad so my grandfather's welsh and my dad took us over to wales and we got to go and meet cousins and family and relatives that still live there but before we went this was our required reading he made That's us all awesome. read this book and i'm so glad that i read it because it just gave me this um, you know, kind of a prequel to what I was going to experience, and the people are really like that. They're just mm -hmm. warm and loving and kind, and, and it just helped me understand my own heritage, and so it's a beautiful story. Yeah, so a lot of the people in the town work in the mine, mm -hmm. and it's, it's like, I don't want to ruin anything, so I'm feeling very careful of what I'm saying, <laughs> Yeah. but it's just this story of Hugh and his sister-in-law, Bronwyn, mm -hmm. is just beautiful. And I'm so sad because my husband wanted to name one of our girls Bronwyn, mm -hmm. but like it didn't mean anything to me. And I read this book after I had our girls. And my niece like, is named Bronwyn after this and after our Welsh heritage. So I know, so I was so sad. I'm yeah. like, that is so beautiful. Like I just needed to be, I needed to read this first. Yeah, it is definitely a great book. 
Yeah, and there is a movie. I've never seen it. I don't know. I knew the movie. It's good. It's black and white. Okay. It's a, it's a really cute movie if you can find it. <laughs> yes. Um, there is, like, I guess I should probably add in some of these things of what is more mature about these books because mm -hmm. there is not language. Um, but there is, he does have sex. But I didn't understand that he was having sex because it was not graphic. It oh, was yeah. not, okay. like, intense. But, like, he had sex. And so... I don't know, maybe we should give I can't some remember of these... that part, honestly. Okay. It's been a long time since I read but it. But I, I remember reading it, like, what just happened? And then I asked my husband, he was like, yeah, they had sex. And I was like, oh, I didn't understand so your, it. So your teens may miss it. <laughs> because I did. <laughs> and that's so, okay. like, yeah. So I thought maybe I'll throw in some of these things that yeah, you that's would good. be curious about. So there's a little bit of fighting. Mm -hmm. um, there's a crime committed in the town and whatnot. So mm -hmm. some of the things, if you're worried about that, that is in there. Yes. All right. Um, I really like Charles Dickens books, and I've never read Charles. I've Dickens. read a few of his, and I just really enjoy them. They're harder to read, and so if you're going to give them to your teen, you're going to expect it to be a little more challenging. But the stories are really good, and so one that I'll this is better for a younger audience, just because the storyline is a little younger. But Oliver Twist is a good one. And I like this one a lot, and I think I like it so much because I used to watch the musical of it too. <laughs> and so I have these Is that the childhood more memories. Sure. Yes, more part. <laughs> yes, um, more please. And I just, I just love it. So it's a, it's a great story if you haven't read or don't know the story of Oliver Twist. He's an orphan living in London and um, has to learn how to survive basically. And it's just a beautiful story. And Dickens just has a way with words and with stories. He's just. A very talented author and I think these classics like this are so good for kids to read because it's when you know these stories you kind of understand culture and our life better because these right. things are, are mentioned in so many things over over time and just brought up so often and so this is just just one of those classics that people should just read all right we'll have to add it to my list it's a good one a lot of these old classics can you get that one for free on Amazon uh, yeah it's free on Kindle okay looks like yeah yeah so a lot of these, those old classics you can get mm -hmm. for free. Lots of them. If you like to read on your Kindle. I do not. I, I hate prefer it. Book. I like <laughs> books, so I always buy a book. I do too. But you can get a $3 paperback, so yeah. Yeah. Okay, so my next book, and you're going to question this title, but it came out first, was Between Shades of Grey. <laughs> it is not Fifty Shades of no. Grey. It is not anything with that. Um, this is... If you're like, I want to cry, here's the book for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say the last name wrong because she is foreign. Uh, Ruta Sep Septis? Septis? Yeah, I don't know. Something beautiful like that. But anyways, it is um, about a Lithuanian girl living in an ordinary life. And the Soviet unions come in. And so think of like what the Jews went through with World War right. II. This is what the Lithuanians went through with the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. um, she's... Her name's Lena, and she's ripped apart from her family and forced to work in a Siberian camp. And it is heart-wrenching. I believe when I read this book, I finished it in a day. Yeah. Like, my husband was out of town, and I was like, oh, fantastic. Like, I'm just going to yeah, read. I love those kind of books. But, yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful story. Yes. And so um, it is – I had my oldest three read it. Um, you have – there was a couple things in this book that I felt like were a little bit more mature. So just kind of heads up. Because um, there are, are like concentration camps, right? And so a woman is felt up, mm -hmm. and then there's a scene with the baby who dies. Mm -hmm. And so those two were just, I don't know, I just always feel like sometimes people recommend a book, and I was like, you didn't tell me, like there was that a that rape was it, scene, right. right? So sometimes it's just a heads up, maybe read it first yourself. But I've had my three oldest read it, and it is a beautiful, beautiful book. Great one, yeah. And I'm glad you remember those things. I have like the worst memory in the world, so I probably won't tell you those things because I only because I don't remember. Well, I, I was just telling Megan it, before this that well, and I am too. I don't enjoy it when I have to read it, but I just don't remember things. I was just telling her before that often the books I recommend, I remember that I loved them, but I don't often remember the whole premise yeah. of them. So I have to remind myself of what it's about. So. We're, we're actually doing that behind the scenes here. Yeah. Just heads up. <laughs> so my next book is The Alchemist. And this is a fun one. It's by um, 
Paulo Coelho. These are all like hard. We're names. really good at yeah, pronouncing. Yeah, I'm not good at pronunciation here. So I yeah, terrible pronunciation. But again, these will all be in the show notes. I'll give you links to them. Um, but this one is fun. It's it's um, this young Andalusian Andalusian shepherd boy, and he wants to, he wants to find treasure. He wants to be rich, and he starts searching. He goes on this quest to find wealth, and his quest leads him more to a wealth of knowledge and wisdom than treasure like gold or jewels. And um, and he learns that that's a lot more important than wealth. And it's it's a really neat book. And I think my son has read this a couple of times as well. He reads everything over again. because yeah. He just reads like crazy. But this is one of his favorites. And I really enjoyed this as well. That's awesome. For adults and kids. I haven't read that one. I've seen that one on other lists though. Yeah. Okay, this next one is not a storybook, but a what are they called, self-help type book. And this is my 13 year old just read this one this year and it rocked his world. I read it, my husband's read it, uh, we all loved it. Um, Karin's undecided yet. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm reading it right now yeah. and it's different. It but is. I'm, I'm gonna sift through it, I'm gonna make it. So um, it's called The Four Agreements by, uh, what'd you say, Don, Don Miguel Ruiz. Oh, we, well, yes. So it says I purchased it multiple <laughs> times, but it was the gift my husband gave away for oh, clients that's cool. was this book. He that's always cool. gives a book away uh, for Christmas. So the four agreements, um, he has some um, Mexican, I don't know if the right word is folklore, but Mexican mm -hmm. wisdom, mm -hmm. ancient Toltec is what it is. So I don't know if that was like an Indian tribe or Mexican. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm sure. not quite sure on that. So it has some of that mixed in there, but what the four agreements are, um, like be impeccable with your word. Um, and I'm gonna forget what they are off the top of my head. I didn't see them right here. Um, be impeccable with your word is a good one about the importance of telling the truth. Yeah. And yeah. like even what you're saying, is it really true or is it your opinion, right? Because mm -hmm. you're like, oh, that outfit's horrid. Like horrid, it's <laughs> right. awful. Like, is that really true? Well, that's just kind of your opinion. But being impeccable with your word is a big one. Um, that's as far as I've gotten, or I'd help you. I know. <laughs> I'm on number one. So. Yeah, I know. I was gonna. <laughs> What are the four I know, sorry about this. I usually had it already. Don't take anything personally. That was mm. like, right? Like That's good. anybody's actions, if your husband's late, your child's late, like it's not about you, right? What's going on with them. Um, don't make assumptions. I love that, just to not assume the mm -hmm. worst in people. And the last one I know is do your best. And he talks about that doing your best looks different to if you're sick, if you're tired, which is like huge for homeschool moms, right? Like doing your best with a new baby. Yes. Doing your best with toddlers, doing your best with teens, just doing your best, whatever your best is, and knowing that that's enough. Mm -hmm. So anyways, this is my 13 year old's favorite book. That's cool. My husband and I loved it. Um, he's given it away to his clients. I was a big fan of theirs, but that is a character type book of yeah. like, yeah. not just a story. I think those are good too. Yeah. All right, my next book is just a story, and one of my most favorite stories of all time, The Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. And I just love this classic. I think it's it's just kind of one of those picturesque, beautiful stories that... I've never read Oh, I can't believe you haven't read this. You have to read it. I love to You're doing time. Little House right now. When I'm doing Little House This is your next one. It's so good. I love it so much. It's, it's about sisters, um, the lives of four sisters, Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy. And they, it's just their, them growing up and their life together and they're just beautiful little stories and um, I just love it. Yeah, that's <laughs> and awesome. And there's so many, there's good movies about it, so it's one of those you could read and then watch the movie, which I love to do with my kids. And there are lots of um, different versions of this. Yeah, like there's just a lot of great and... messages that come from it as well. Yeah. Okay, I, my next book is also a um, character building book. So that's when we do school, one of the books was my children who get 12 is a book about building their character mm -hmm. and emotional health as well. So this is one that we have all loved. I believe I have my four oldest have read it and then my husband and I read it. My husband and I bought our own copy so we could have like our own little book club. And, <laughs> but it just turned out like it was organic, right? Yeah. It wasn't like this planned thing, but we were getting annoyed. Like you took it again, I want to finish. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, but it's Carol Dweck's book, Mindset of having a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. And talks about, <clears throat> sometimes we have a fixed mindset. Like if uh, I, so I enjoy running. 
And if I see a runner out there and they're really fast and really amazing, and I'm like, well, I'll never be that. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like, well, you're right, because you have a fixed mindset, kind of thinking this is as high as I can go. Right. But then they followed people around, like, so kids who got into Juilliard, right? Mm -hmm. So really talented kids. And some kids had a lot of natural ability. And then they got to Juilliard, but they didn't know actually how to work hard. Mm -hmm. And they would not progress. And kids who would come into Juilliard who weren't as good, but knew how to work hard, would actually progress and surpass these other children. Okay. So kind of like was hopeful, whether you are terrible at something or good at something, mm -hmm. anybody can become really great at something. You probably can't become great at everything because right. that's exhausting and I don't really want to be a great mechanic. Or, Not only you know exhausting, I mean? but I don't think it's really possible in this life yeah. To, yeah. to be great at everything. But it's knowing like, hey, I want to try this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to figure out how to do it. So I would really love that's that good one. mindset. I listened to that one on Audible. I oh, okay. that as well. Yeah. All right, my next one is The Giver. And this is a series by Lois Lowry. And I think this is really good. Have you read these? Did you say you hadn't read I these? haven't. Okay, so this, um, it would work probably in the tween category as well, but I just think they're a really neat book. But, um, books, I guess, plural. The first one I think is the best. <laughs> the other, you could take the first one and leave it, like, at that. And the others in the series are good too, but. So it's, it's a uh, dystopian kind of world, and I think this was probably the first of the dystopians ever. Okay. It was written in 94, so it's an old, old book. I mean, older. 1994? 94. Okay. So in terms of dystopian, it's old. Oh, like, okay. Those all came out like, like more in this decade. <laughs> okay. But um, it's a story, it's like this 12-year-old boy who lives in a world without color. And everything is the same. It's all, like everyone has to conform and live the same way. And he has this job where he has to receive memories of people. And so from doing that, he's learning all these secrets that there's mm -hmm. like other things that exist besides this sameness. And, and so he starts wanting to, to learn about it and discover it and it changes his world. And it's really cool. Is there a movie about that one? I think that there might be. Okay. I'm not sure. It sounds familiar. Yeah, I think there might be. So there, the series, the, the Giver is the first and then there's Gathering Blue, Messenger, and then Sun. And they're all kind of a similar theme, but with different characters, I think is how it was. Okay. But it was really cool and I really enjoyed it. And I like, I like books that um, encourage people to break out of conformity. Yeah. I don't know. I was homeschooling in that I know, show, and right? I think that's <laughs> just kind of me in general, too. I always have liked to break the norm a little bit, not in a bad way, but just being okay with my differences and my uniqueness, and I think that this book does a good job of teaching that message. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, this next book I have not read, um, but it is my son Porter's favorite book. He does not like when I don't say his name, so <laughs> it is Porter's favorite book. Um, when my father-in-law was passed away, we inherited all his Louis L'Amour books. Oh yeah. And I thought Louis L'Amour was just westerns. I, yeah, I haven't read any of his books. Yeah. So we have a whole bookshelf of Louis L'Amour. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, this is one of them. So Porter's favorite one is Last of the Breed. Um, it's, I'm just gonna kind of tell you the gist of it from Amazon. Excuse me, the story of a US Air Force major, Joe Mack, a man born out of time when his experimental aircraft is forced down in Russia and he escapes a Soviet prison camp. Um, he must call upon his ancient skills of his Indian forebears to survive the vast Siberian wilderness. So, hands down, Porter would like recommend this book a hundred times over. Mm -hmm. My husband read this book as a child and he loved it. My daughter tried it and said she hated it more than anything. Oh, how funny. So, I don't know if so it just speaks tried. more to boys. Um, but it was just really amazing book to him that like this is I don't I wanted to ask my teens what their favorite was so this was Porter's yeah. favorite book that's cool um, all right so my next one is the adventures of Huckleberry Finn and I just love this book I think it's so much yeah. fun by Mark Twain if you don't know that and yeah. this is this is one I think probably everyone is at least aware of and maybe seen a movie version of and I love it so much. And it's, it's a sequel to The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Sawyer, both of which are fabulous. And I just love the Huckleberry Finn character so much. He's so much fun and just, it's just like a fun light book. Yet it also tackles those, those harder things of slavery and prejudice and all of that as well. And I like the, 
the cultural aspects of it, you know, how much you're learning about the Deep South and and also you have to learn how to read in their slang. Yeah. And that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> So that's another just kind just of fun, fun light one. one, but I love it. And I think Do you it's like it a great better one for than, kids to read. Uh, Tom Sawyer? I'm not sure which I like better. I'm trying to remember the differences there and which I liked. I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't remember. I, my See, kids really like Tom Sawyer. I liked them both, but I don't know which I liked better. Oh, okay. I don't, both good books. We can't go wrong with um, But yeah, to... it's saying in here, be careful of the coarse language. And I'm, I'm trying to remember. It's so I know the N-word Yeah, it probably like says the N-word and... I think it's great to know that like that happened yeah. and teach him and then teach him not to say it. Yes. So interesting. My husband's been working with Kenyans lately uh -huh. and it is not an offensive word there. Oh, it is a term of endearment. Oh, that's surprising. Huh? And so when <laughs> the, the guy, his client work, moved to the United States, he's black, but he mm -hmm. would use that word frequently yeah. because to him it was a term of endearment and people were like, Oh, you can't say that word. And it was like, what? Like, oh, why not? Because it was huh. like a very sweet way. If you had a white parent and a black parent, mm -hmm. that's what their baby was called. Oh. But it was like, oh, you're so beautiful. You're so sweet. And oh. so it's interesting to huh. see. That's I don't know. Hard. My husband who loves words, right? That, yeah. that That's an interesting word because that's what in Spanish, it's negro, right? Yeah, and the so word black. Yeah. The word black. So all these things. So inter anyway, interesting. Mm -hmm. It does have that word in there. But I just taught my kids to not say it, right. I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so I wanted to ask my oldest son, Ethan, what his favorite book is, and this is one I don't even know how many times he's read and reread and read and read some more, but it is The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So fun. Um, he loves the mystery. He loves to try to figure it out. Um, they, I know they're a little bit darker sometimes. They are, yeah. Um... And there's there's like mentions of drug abuse, like they they use um, opioids, pop, okay. poppy. <laughs> like to remember. Poppy seed? O opium, opium. Okay. Yeah, but I, it's like funny the way they mention it. But yeah, that that's mentioned in there because I think Sherlock Holmes is frequently using it. So that's an oh, interesting he is? side okay. note to know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, they're fun. They're fun stories. Yes, he loves the adventure. It's funny. He does mm -hmm. not like any books with romance or any movies with romance. Yeah. Like, he just wants the adventure. He wants to mm -hmm. figure things out. And so that is Ethan's... I think at Costco, at Christmas time, they'll have those big classic yeah. books. And somebody gave him that huge one. I have that one, okay, too. Okay, yes. The hardback, and, like, yes. pretty ones. Yeah, I have a set of those. I and he's them. read it and reread it so, so many times. That's cool. And this is my one of my son's most favorites, and it's The Ranger's Apprentice. And this is a whole series. I think there's, like, ten of them. And he really loves these. My, my husband also really, really loves these books. I read them as well, and I think they're a lot of fun. Um, I wouldn't call them my favorites, but they're great for teenage boyish people. And we're being a little heavy on the teenage boy recommendations, yes. aren't we? <laughs> yeah, I think we are, because we have a lot of those. Yeah. My daughter is not a teenager yet. She's 12, and so she hasn't come up into that. And so I'm not, I'm not certain what the teenage girls love quite yet. But these are definitely more boy heavy. So, sorry yeah. about that. Oh, yeah, sorry. But I do have a teenage daughter, but I guess she just reads whatever the boys are that's reading. That's funny. <laughs> and I think a lot of these go both ways. But so Ranger's Apprentice, it's um, I don't know, I don't know really a time period, but it's like it's in the past because oh we're almost out of time, yeah. you guys. <laughs> it's in the past, and it's um, this man training to be like a uh, fighter, and it's a really fun series. So. Pass it along to you. Yeah, I'll do just one do one, one last Kay. one. I just took it from your list. Oh, you're good. Um, Pride and Prejudice. Oh, yeah. Great yeah, one. That is a great one. And uh, my daughter has read that one and did like this one. Um, I actually, this was one of the first classics I read years and years ago. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I need to read a freaking classic book. So good. Um, but Jane Austen, published in 1813. What's fun about this one is not only do I like the story, but, like I think it's a fun story, but it is a book that has had so many different movies made yeah. about it that it's culturally still relevant yeah and so so fun i haven't seen it but i know there's a zombie version <laughs> i didn't see that one yep. but i saw one where a girl went back in time and yeah. elizabeth came there's up like to, modern day versions yes. of it yeah and so that was really fun mm -hmm. okay do you have one well. last one yeah i'll tell you one last one and this is this is kind of just an author but G.A. Henty, mm -hmm. he does a ton of historical fiction books and i think these are really great books for um 
like learning about historical time periods, and they're just fun to read as well. And they have a lot of them on audio that are great to listen to too. So, okay, that's the end. We're gonna cut it short. We're gonna cut you off. We have to end at thirty minutes. That's yeah. Our goal. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening today, and we'll be back with you next week with more fun stuff. All right. See you guys. Bye.